Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 2. Today is episode number 49. If you guys do enjoy the content, then be sure to leave a like, as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm at the moment. Feel free to subscribe, drop a follow on Twitch, and hopefully you enjoy the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. Alright, so we are here, back, with another recording session. It's been about a week since we've last done any falls of content but we are here we are getting on with it we're starting off with a world s class trophy today uh we got five races to go and we're taking the top secret supra starting off with Miguelo, moving on to silverstone suzuka circuit maple valley raceway and finishing off with sebring let's get going all right here we go attempt number five this time we've just massively upgraded the car and basically just giving it more downforce. I'm hoping that this will still have top speed. But it should be a little better around corners now. Um... Feels a little more stable. Yeah, the top speed definitely won't be as high. But it does seem like we can tune the wing a little bit and make it grippier. Which is a good thing because I'm actually able to keep up with the McLaren now through the corners. And I mean, like, that corner was a lot more flat out than it was before. Whoa. It's just when you counter steer in this game, it just throws you off completely. So you have to be 100% confident. At least in other Forza games, counter steering doesn't throw you off as extremely. This is just like, oh, you counter steered? Punishment. Yeah, tomorrow is the uh, WRC cruise that we're doing. So we're all taking rally cars and stuff like that. Which is cool. I like that. Just uh, make sure you've got all your cars all ready. Uh, and upgraded to the classes that set for them. Okay, yeah, this is much better, actually. It's not substantial, but it's enough that it's getting me a little bit better than the McLaren at the moment. Visions keep on haunting me. There we go. Not too bad. This thing's managing to hold its weight just about. I still can't believe the car basically had like 30 kilos of downforce on the front and we've just ramped it up to 90. And the rear's got like 120. Now is the time to check how much top speed we're getting. Okay, so we're losing 10 kilometers an hour on that straight there. 
compared to what we could do before. But let's be honest, I'm still faster than that McLaren on the straight. So, I think it's a worthwhile compromise. At least once we get into like R4 and R3 and R2 and R1, those kind of categories, all of the cars are going to be fairly hom homologated. So... There are going to be pretty much even performance to an extent. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what I had before. But there was just no downforce. So going around corners, it would either understeer or oversteer. It just couldn't choose what it wanted to do. Majority of the time, it was understeer as well. <laughs> You've got mail <laughs> And for family I guess What was that line from uh, Fast and Furious? I can't remember. Something about family. But that's all that comment reminded me of. can't turn your back on family. I think that's the line, yeah. Oh! It was in the dirt for a little bit, but still substantial distance ahead, so... Clearly, we did something right for once. Move me. Right, we have one more lap after this. <laughs> that is like the top tier of saxophone music. Meow, 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 meow.
Here we go. Oh, nearly bend it. Woo! Meow. Meow, 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 meow. It's such a tune, it gets stuck in your head. What a tune. Alright, here we go. Across the line. We are done! Except for the fact that we got four more to do. Woohoo! Fun! Right, we got ten points. Let's go on with the next one. Alright, here we go. Race number two. Starting off with... Uh, in second place with a Super Round Silver Zone. One thing I am extremely surprised about is how this game still will not put you in position based off of championship standings. Like, I should be starting in first place because I am first in the championship. But for some reason, the game doesn't agree with my opinion. To which I say, fuck you, game. Not bad. This car really does like flowing around the corners here, but yeah, it's not ideal, obviously. There are faster cars than this. The McLaren is very close. No more. I just can't wait to get onto the later Forza games. Like Forza Motorsport 6, 7, uh, Horizon 3, 4, 5. And just have every car that I'll ever need. Oh, and the Hot Wheels DLC is out now. Uh, as of time of recording. Uh, the last episode that we recorded, um, it wasn't out. It's out now. Uh, and it's not... It's much better than the Horizon 3 one, I can tell you that now. Um, but it doesn't... It does feel fairly similar. Not bad. This is doing a good good job getting around some of these corners. The only thing is, this race is going to take about 10 minutes, probably. Okay, so that McLaren definitely is faster than us through that section. But we're also blocking it off, so it can't do anything. What episode number is this? 49. I think it's 49. If I'm not mistaken. I think we're up to like episode 24 on YouTube as well, so 
We've definitely got a, a good buffer, which means we'll have a good few weeks where we don't have to play any Forza games, which is good. But then once Motorsport 3 comes out, jeez. It's going to be Motorsport for a good, like, two and a bit months. Non-stop. Guaranteed. Motorsport 4 will probably take us about four months to do. It would take us six months, probably, to upload all the content for it. But I'm hoping that probably by about February time, Motorsport 4 will be finished. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. Not bad. Ding, 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 ding. bad we are on the penultimate lap we still have that mclaren behind us but it looks like we're holding a safe distance so shouldn't be too much of a concern for us There we go. Oh, 
There we go, result. Not bad. We've got another 10 points. Time to move on to uh, Suzuka circuit now. Woohoo! This is going to be fun. All right, here we go. Next race, Suzuka circuit. Let's do this. One, go! Uh, messed up that first corner. There we go. Good start so far. I have no clue why they've scheduled in five laps on this, though. Probably should have been four. Uh, this is the one thing I'm not a fan of the Forza games, is they're extremely inconsistent with how long races are and stuff like that. Like, there's got to be some similarities or some planning involved. Like, some of the races are, like, 9 minutes while the others are 11. Like, that's... When a lap is 2 minutes long, you can get rid of that extra lap and make it 9 minutes again. You know. Not bad. Oh, It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's very long. Not bad. 
I think after this, um, and after the R4 Championship, we actually move on to a Magello Endurance, which is going to be fun to do today. I quite like uh, Magello as a track, so... I think a couple of episodes ago, I just said, fuck it, it's my new favourite. It is. It's slightly more enjoyable than Suzuka at the moment. Suzuka's a very good second, though, at the moment for me. Magello is just the perfect example of a good racetrack. Oh, that McLaren's on my ass again. Please, fuck right off. Honestly, I had no clue why that was sticking so much. Like, I know when you touch a tire in the dirt, it normally drags a little bit, but that was ridiculous how much it was dragging then. Whoa. Not bad. There you go, not bad. Oh, 
There we go. There we go. Result. Crossing the finish line with a good result there. I'll take that and we'll go on to the next one. We got level 41 as well. We got more Mercedes cars. Woohoo! It's time. I do like the look of that exposed intercooler. I don't know why I think that's cool. Quite a visually nice thing, actually. When you think about it. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is this final corner because that one I normally take flat out in a lot of cars because you can go a lot faster. The problem is this car clearly doesn't have enough downforce or enough grip to do that. So I don't know how far I can push it because if I push it too far, it's game over. But luckily, we're in a position where if I win this, I can come third in the next race. And it doesn't affect the championship standings at all. Not bad. Looking good, actually, the way we're uh, flowing through these corners here. Oh, never mind. I spoke too soon. But yeah, getting through that final corner was, uh, it wasn't too bad. Could have been better. I feel like the car can go faster, but I don't want to risk it. Because there have been times I've done it and I've spun the car out by hitting the wall. So, no, I don't think it's worth risking it. Bing, 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 bing. bad.
do 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 do. We go not bad I just realized we got nearly five seconds of um, distance at the moment which is good the more time the better I'm wondering where I'm getting that time though because the straights aren't straight enough or long enough to actually be gaining them there so unless it's on that bank straight there with with the little bump I can't see where I'm getting in that time. Because it's definitely not being gained here. Because we've just lost time, as you can see on that um, graphic. We're definitely not gaining it through here. So the only thing I can think of is that straight that's right next to us now. We are in a position we can take an act. Uh. Shit. Ferrari's just ruined my chances of catching up now. Cheers. Frank. We are in a, in a position we can lose couple of places at the moment. We have to win the next one, so. Now if I catch up, there is definitely some sorcery going on because there is no way that my front all my rear downforce is it anywhere near what we tuned it to. We've got a 4.5 second gap now. I still can't believe, like... Honestly, Maple Valley is one of the worst tracks that they dragged through. To choose to say, yeah, we'll bring this back for every Forza game. Like this section here is just disgusting. They could have brought Alpine Ring through. Alpine Ring was fun because it was fast, there was breaking zones, there was everything. It flowed, it was awesome. They got rid of Alpine Ring. Sure, they brought back the Alps in Motorsport 4. Is it the Burmese Alps or whatever I think the track's called? They brought that back in Motorsport 4. As sort of like a replacement of it, I guess. Still pretty shit. Like, that track was horrendous. And it had pretty much a... Now that you think about it, it's actually pretty much just a copy and paste of Maple Valley. But with snow instead of leaves, I guess. Yeah, I really think they should be getting rid of 
Obviously, Maple Valley is going to be in the next game. It's been confirmed in Motorsport 8. But I think they should remaster some of the old tracks that were in Motorsport 1. Some of the tracks are in Motorsport 4, for example. Bring back Twin Ring Mategi. Oh my god, that was beautiful as a racetrack. Alright, we got third place for that one. Not great, but not terrible either. Alright, here we go. Final race. We gotta come... I'm not actually sure what position we gotta finish. I think second... No, we gotta come first, actually. Oh, it should be fine. We've got the two long straights on this track, so... Going up the inside there. Well, you've got to think, people haven't complained about Motorsport 7 with how much content was in there. If it's 150 gigabytes, but it's got like double the track list, and it's got like all the cars that are in basically, you know, like 800 cars, something like that, then Motorsport 7 will do better, uh, sorry, Motorsport 8 will do better than Gran Turismo 7. Because Gran Turismo 7, the letdown for that game was the fact there was three additional tracks. In five years of development of GT Sport, they added three extra tracks when GT 7 came out, I think. Yeah. They haven't even got, like... Yeah, wow. That's a lot of tracks. Three tracks. For five years. And a few cars. Like, it was disappointing, the lack of content. Like, you could tell they held some content back for monthly updates. That's fine. But at least start it with a decent amount of content for the amount of time that you've spent on it. Like, I, genuinely, I think it was Trial Mountain and Deep Forest Raceway were the two tracks that they have done, that they added. In fact, yeah, that was it. So it was two tracks that they added to the game. And one new layout to a Magyar circuit which was a track that already existed. So yeah, it was extremely disappointing. They finally added a new track last update, and that was Watkins Glen, which actually was kind of a surprise and a really nice track that they added, I'll be honest. But for a game that had five years in development, for them to add two new tracks. The thing is, they don't even have to do track design. Majority of the old tracks, like... I think the easiest track that it would have taken them to put into the game was Apricot Hill Raceway. Because that was already a racetrack. It already had runoff zones. And the actual corners on it would be perfectly fine. They wouldn't have to modify much on that track. But when you look at other tracks, obviously you might have to change stuff. The only thing they'd have to do is remaster the textures and make it look new. But that wouldn't take as much effort as redesigning a track, putting new stuff in. What was the other one? Grand Valley Speedway or whatever. That didn't even e exist. Acid, thank you for the posture check. Appreciate it. They didn't add Grand Valley Speedway, which sucked. Oh, sorry, High Speed Ring made a return as well. So yeah, it was three, three tracks. Grand Valley wasn't in there. None of the street circuits that were in older Gran Turismo games. 
Um, so no Rome, no Hong Kong, no nothing. In fact, now that I think about it, is there even a single street track in Gran Turismo 7? I actually don't think there's a single street track. So yeah, that's great. There isn't even any like street circuits or anything like that. The only way that Gran Turismo can redeem itself, and like Gran Turismo is a brand that can redeem itself, is by constantly bringing out content for Gran Turismo 7, and when Gran Turismo 8 comes up, having a fuck ton of content. That's the only way it can redeem itself. But Gran Turismo 8 has to have all the content that Gran Turismo 7 had, and more still. Otherwise, Gran Turismo 8 would be the last Gran Turismo. And it has to come out on this generation of console, too. Before PS6 comes out. I do see it as being a downhill spiral for Gran Turismo. Which is kind of depressing, because Sony even binned off evolution studios because it was becoming a threat towards polyphony digital because they wanted to do like a more simulation experience to drive club uh we are talking about uh gran turismo and how disappointing the actual track list was um yeah they Sony binned off Evolution Studios because they wanted to make Drive Club more simulation and they said, no, we have Gran Turismo. And because they refused to sort of let that go, they cancelled all development of all Evolution Studios projects. Which Evolution Studios then went into, uh, got absorbed by Codemasters. But... Yeah, the Gran Turismo... It's in a tough situation because the amount of effort that that studio is put in is clearly not showing. When you look at how much effort was put into Gran Turismo 4, granted, it didn't take as much effort to do stuff, but that's besides the point. The amount of effort that was put into Gran Turismo 4 to make the content, it's GT5, GT6... I mean, GT5 got away with a lot of stuff. Like, we loved GT5. And the thing is, the event list was... Pretty ridiculous. The car list was from other games. But because there was content in it, and there was a variety, we didn't care. Yeah. Gran Turismo 5 was the first Gran Turismo I played, other than GT PSP. So, when I played Gran Turismo 4, I was like, wow, there's a lot of events. But there wasn't anything that I hadn't seen before, because all the stuff on Gran Turismo PSP was just imported tracks from GT2. GT2, GT4. On the PS2. That's what I was trying to say. So, I mean, technically speaking, the best Gran Turismo game there's ever been is the PSP version. Because it's got the most cars, it's got the best variety. The only thing is maybe the events aren't there. But it still had everything else. It still had the driving school and all that. It's just, you know. They put so little effort into it. And it's sad to see that. There we go. We finished first. Take my reward. It does seem like the... I don't know what his name is, but the boss of Polyphony Digital. It does seem like he's a little bored of Gran Turismo. He always looks so... Like, passionate about it. Whenever he talks about the game, but... It just seems like he's not putting any effort into it. Here we go. We got an NSX from 2005. Woohoo! So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.